Uh, so let's talk about some aspects of the OKR system, applying the OKR system um, systematically throughout the organization. Um, this isn't going to contradict any of the rules for SMART goals. It's just going to build on the rules for SMART goals. So we really talked about SMART goals um, in kind of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, context. And now we're talking about how do you take an idea like SMART goals and um, apply it across the entire organization. And there are just issues that come up when you try to do that that you don't really have at the individual level. So let's talk about what are the effective characteristics characteristics of an OKR system. The first thing is that we need to focus on a few important OKRs. We also need to collaboratively, collaboratively cascade OKRs throughout the organization. We need to make OKRs transparent. We need to make our OKRs ambitious. We need to periodically assess and revise the OKRs. And then finally, after an OKR cycle, we need to reflect on performance. So we'll start off talking about uh, how we should focus on a few important OKRs. Um, management lies in the capacity to select from the many activities of seemingly comparable significance, the one or two or three that provide leverage well beyond the others and concentrate on them. Um, we we are torn in so many different directions in our modern life. There's so much that, that we try to do every single day. Um, one of the strengths of OKRs is simplicity. It's, it's deciding what are the most important things we're going to do. And also, and this is really important, is what are the things that we're not going to do? Um, this has been one of the most powerful things that I've taken from studying OKRs is that you have to be very thoughtful about what you're not going to do. Um, so for example, you know, I, I don't teach classes over Christmas break. I don't teach classes over the summer. And, you know, at the beginning of when I have a big break like that, I'll sit down, I'll just write a to do list um, of all the things I want to do over the break. And, uh, there's no way I can get through everything in that break, right? I have an entire, career's worth of work to do. Um, and so there's no way I can get it done over a break. Uh, and so what happens is I end up doing the things I like most or the things that are the easiest. And then at the end of the summer, I've maybe accomplished a lot. I've done a lot of work, but it wasn't the most important work. Uh, I did the things that were easy and fun, not ne necessarily the things that were important. OKRs fundamentally is about deciding what are the most important things Let's do those and let's cut everything else out. Everything else is a distraction. Um, it's like going through my to-do list and saying, oh, this would be fun, but is it the most important? Um, OKRs focus our effort on a few important objectives. Um, so set three to five objectives, each with three to five key results. So uh, at the organizational level, we'll have maybe yeah three objectives and, and each of those objectives has three key results. And all of these objectives together, of course, should be pointing towards our North Star, which is strategy. Um, the objectives should help us accomplish our strategy, which is in turn helping us accomplish ROI. So strategy is the thing that links all of these objectives throughout the organization together. Because we only have a few OKRs, because there are only a few objectives that we're really going to focus on achieving, you have to be very careful about which objectives you pursue. Uh, the Ford Pinto is a good example of this. The objectives for the Ford Pinto uh, were that it would be cheap, were that it would be quick to market, and that it would have high fuel efficiency. Did the Ford Pinto meet those three objectives? Yes, it was cheap good gas mileage, and uh, they got it out to market quickly. Was it a good car? No, because it would burst into flames if you got rear-ended, right? Um, that's not a good car. But safety was not on, one of the objectives, was not one of the main objectives that they were trying to accomplish with the, uh, with the Ford Pinto. And so when it came to making decisions, um, like, for example, uh, they were going to put a, a metal plate into uh, the back bumper to protect the gas tank, but it added cost and it added weight, which reduced the fuel uh, 
uh, miles per gallon, the fuel efficiency. And so they decided not to put that thing in, right? To protect the gas tank. And that seems like a ridiculous decision, but it's perfectly in line with the objectives of making it lighter uh, and making it cheaper. And safety was not one of their objectives. And so they didn't focus energy on it. Kind of like this, uh, if it goes without saying, it's probably best to say it. If your car has to be safe, then say that. Make it one of the key, uh, the uh, objectives. Um, OKRs focus effort on what you're actually trying to achieve. Um, so say I'm you know, working with some uh, village in Africa where people don't have enough to eat. And so my solution is this, they, they all grow yams. So uh, my solution is this, is I genetically engineer a yam that's like twice as big as their normal yams. And so now I've doubled, doubled the amount of food that's available in the village. But because my yam is so huge, it takes like 15 hours to, to cook it. And so no one eats them because they're too big. Right. And so what I've done is I've confused uh, what my objective really was. My objective wasn't uh, to make bigger yams. My objective was to get people to eat more food and doubling the yams in size did not accomplish that. It, it seems like it would be in line with that, but it's not. And my goal wasn't to uh, make bigger yams. My goal was to increase how many calories these people have available um, and bigger yams did not help that. So um, OKRs really clarify exactly what we're trying to achieve and help us focus our effort on achieving it. OKR R should also be inspiring. Um, make shareholders more money is often not inspiring, right? Like make rich people richer, like help our CEO hit his quota for the bonus this year. Uh, those aren't really inspiring goals. Um, objectives should really focus on what, why does the organization organization exist? What are we doing that's uh, innovative, that's meaningful, that's helpful? Um, how are we making the world a better place? Which I know is such a cliche in business. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that, but it, it's, how are we investing in our future and, and making things better? And what part do you play in that? Um, OKR should really be about more than just making more money for shareholders. They should somehow touch people's ambitions or humanity in some way. Uh, make sure you have appropriate deadlines for OKR. So the length of your OKR cycle will vary depending on what you're working on, what industry you're in. Um, John Doerr, who wrote the book on OKRs, uh, works in tech and he really likes uh, three month uh, OKR cycles, so quarterly OKR cycles. That's one way to do it. Um, different industries, uh, maybe it's gonna take six months or a year, your OKRs. Um, I tend to use semesters to set OKRs because that's like the natural rhythm of my uh, work life as it's set up into to semesters. So I tend to, to use OKRs on a semesterly basis. Um, but just be thoughtful uh, about how long you want your cycle to be, how long you want your OKR deadlines to be. Um, if the, the danger of making your deadlines too long, of making your cycle too long is that people wait and kind of waste time until the deadline comes up. Um, and the danger of making your cycle too short is that you're always revising it, right? You spend more time uh, revising your OKR plan than you do actually doing work. Uh, so be thoughtful about how much guidance people need, how much, uh, how often people need to be checked in on, what is a meaningful chunk of work uh, in whatever your industry is.